What do you get if you cross a brand new spider from Porsche? Some freshly concocted hybrid products from Turtle Wax, an unpredictable weather forecast from the Met Office, and a big white tent from a man in a van. No? Well, it's the latest car cleaning guru video, of course. So dodgy jokes aside, I've been looking forward to putting this one together since attending a Turtle Wax product launch event in Arizona. And while I'm not usually one for networking or hobnobbing, it was a great opportunity, especially for a sun worshipper and car lover like myself. I'm also getting rid of my patchwork of demos here. Prior to the event, I obviously made sure to charter the hotel's complimentary Tesla Model X to the local mountain for a topless hike to both survey the Phoenix surroundings and search for some of the famed local cougars. And as entertaining as that was, it was all about what was going down the following day with a bunch of other YouTube detailing personalities at the swanky members-only Otto Car Club. So, in a nice informal manner, Turtle Wax shared their new hybrid solutions range with us and demonstrated its foolproof application outside in the extreme desert heat, allowing us to subsequently cool off around an eclectic collection of cars, some of which we even took out for an early evening spin to the snake and scorpion infested badlands for some exotic sunset shots. So, on my gloomy return to the Baltic British Isles then, I received a snazzy box of tricks to brighten up my day which contained all the new products that I promised to get to grips with and thought what better motor to test them out on than this mighty bright Miami Blue 718 Spider that was in dire need of some hardware in winter protection. The hybrid solutions range that as far as I'm aware is now on sale everywhere represents a considerable step up in terms of quality from Turtle Wax and consists of five completely new products encompassing an all-in-one polish capable of providing both correction and ceramic protection. A dedicated ceramic based spray coat in which I guess you could say is the flagship product of the range and the one Turtle Wax was most excited to show us. A slick ceramic wash and wax shampoo formulated to safely clean and maintain a treated car. A wet wax which effortlessly boosts gloss and protection following a final rinse. And a 3-in-1 detail spray designed for use in between washes. And while each product can be used independently of one another to get the best out of them in terms of durability and shine they should ideally all be used together. Now, because this spider hadn't yet been corrected or protected, I intended to use the all-in-one ceramic polish and dedicated spray coat in here, then follow up with a separate video of the other maintenance products being put to use on my own car after I'd performed the same preparatory procedure off-camera. Now, luckily, the owner had generously arranged for a marquee to be erected halfway through the day so I could at least get undercover for the latter stages of the process, but the priority for now was to simply give the car a decent clean outdoors in the usual manner, rain or shine. First up with the 20 inch satin black wheels which following an initial contactless pre-spray with a degreaser and a pressure rinse were given a good going over with a few different brushes and a soft wheel mitt used in conjunction with a diluted all purpose cleaner and a bodywork shampoo to safely remove as much dirt as possible from the aerodynamically designed wheels various nooks and crannies. I then went on to degrease the lower parts of the Porsche to chemically disperse any heavier traffic fill, before snow foaming everywhere apart from the fabric top over which was going to be tended to separately while the degreaser and foam was soaking into the bodywork. An over-the-counter cleaner the owner had picked up shortly after buying the car was generously applied to the new fabric top before being worked in with a soft bristle brush or two instead of the sponge that comes with the product which was far too rough for my liking. 
And while I'd usually just use a diluted all-purpose cleaner on a new top like this, so long as I didn't let any product overspray dry on the paintwork, which was unlikely in these overcast conditions, wouldn't do any harm and would help keep the owner happy as he got stuck in with it too. Once the product had been sufficiently worked in, the fabric top and the rest of the car was given a thorough rinse off with the pressure washer to remove all of the cleaning product residue, suds and loose dirt before any actual physical contact could be made with the fresh Miami blue paintwork. And even if a car is relatively clean to begin with, the longer you spend on this pre-wash and pre-rinse stage, the safer the subsequent contact wash will be, so it's not worth rushing, especially on an expensive new car like this. A soft microfiber mitt, which to be honest is more like a plush towel, was used for the contact wash with a wax-free shampoo. And I didn't use the Hybrid Solutions Ceramic Wash and Wax from Turtle Wax here, as a decontamination wash prior to polishing and protecting is all about deep cleaning and stripping the car back, not laying down superficial layers of protection. So, as I said earlier, I'll be reserving that for a follow-up maintenance wash on my own car once it's been properly prepped. As miserable as cold, damp weather like this can be, one of the major plus sides of it is that you don't have to worry too much about chemicals drying on the car, so you can take your time elsewhere, safe in the knowledge that they'll sit on the surface out of the way of the sun's harmful rays for as long as necessary. I couldn't really feel any roughness on the surface, so decided to keep things simple and chemically decontaminate with an iron remover only, and then spot remove any small bits of tar I found later as necessary. So after being applied to all areas of the paintwork, the active eye remover was left to soak in for a few minutes to dissolve whatever metal based contamination it came into contact with, which as you can see wasn't a huge amount but was still enough to make applying it worthwhile. The car was then quickly foamed over one last time to keep the iron remover active for a moment or two and ensure all remaining residues were thoroughly soaked up and subsequently removed with the pressure washer, which makes sense to me rather than a straight rinse which leaves more of a chance for a heavy chemical residue to be left behind. Following the final rinse, the spider was uh, dried off with both a plush microfiber towel and a powerful mini blower to simultaneously soak up and drive out any residual rinse water from all areas of the car including the wheels and shuts. While I was at that, the big top arrived, much to the bemusement of the nosy neighbours, and just in time for me as it was starting to drizzle, and watching the poor guy put it up confirmed why I just don't bother with this sort of thing for cleaning cars. Far too much hassle and potential for damage in my opinion.
So once the car was as dry as I could realistically get it outdoors then, it was moved under cover and positioned accordingly so I could get set up for the circus lights camera action style and capture a cringy intro for the crowd as things often have to be done in reverse order when filming. A panel prep spray from Menzerna was then used to give the car one final wipe down which would help to eliminate any remaining unseen residue and ensure the bodywork was as naked as possible and after being spritzed over the surface was simply wiped off with a brand new towel to prevent any more in being inflicted. So I intended to machine the main panels and give the remaining areas a hand polish with some pristine pads and applicators and being a brand new motor there wasn't a great deal of swirls present but when applying a durable protectant it makes sense to me at least to polish the surface first to prevent sealing in a multitude of sins you might later regret. It was then finally time to test the all new hybrid solution ceramic polish and wax out and after a few blobs were added to my usual go to medium cut foam pad it was spread over a select area of the bonnet before being worked in at full whack with the direct drive flex to see what it could do. The ceramic enriched residue was then buffed off with ease which was good but upon closer inspection there seemed to be no discernible improvement and actually more swirls than before which obviously wasn't good but after a bit of head scratching I remember during the demonstration in Arizona it was explained that the polish doesn't contain the diminishing abrasives I'm used to dealing with and should instead be viewed as pad dependent so gave it another shot with a softer pad which thankfully generated far better results. Now I knew I wasn't going to get the entire car polished in one go but the big top wasn't going anywhere for a few days so aimed to get the bonnet and humpbacked boot out of the way before I ran out of steam so that I could focus on the doors, quarters, bumpers and intricate bits the following day. Now although I generally prefer not to work in the dark, one benefit of doing so is that it can be helpful in tracking down swirls and imperfections as opposed to dealing with a lot of ambient light which can serve to hide them so made the most of the lack of natural light before letting the damp winter air dictate the end of the working day. So I'll call that part one and leave it there for now then. Obviously I still have the ceramic polish to finish up with as well as the dedicated spray coating to follow which will be used on all parts of the exterior including the glass, exposed plastics and wheels, not to mention the subsequent aftershots to look forward to so stay tuned for part 2 which I promise I won't make you wait too long for as I uh, already have most of the footage lined up and ready to go.